and we can as said um, continue with this topic of temperature resistance so yeah as we we might have discussed or as uh, professor Vick has discussed with you so usually if we look at current flow in metals what is flowing there as current are electrons and electrons have a negative charge so in reality there are negative part particles that are flowing as current still if we look at technical current we always count it as positive um, but in reality okay it's it's negative electrons that somehow yeah that get the force by some external electric field so we apply a voltage to this conductor there's some electric field these particles are charged they get a force and they will they will move through this conductor and once in a while they bounce against um, the atoms or the, the protons let's say the nuclei of the atoms uh, which are positively charged and so at cold temperatures or let's say at room temperature it might look like this that there is yeah, of course this is very 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 simplified schematic but um, okay electrons move through our conductor material and once in a while they will bounce against the, um, the atoms and this will create some counter force this will create resistance so now if we increase the temperature and what happens if we increase the temperature is just that these atoms are moving more and um, so as i've maybe said before uh, a thermome thermometer is, is just a speedometer for atoms so you are measuring the speed of atoms and if there's higher temperature they will they will move more they will oscillate more and so it's more it gets more probable that the the electrons will interact with these atoms so there will be more counter force there will be more resistance and usually will, the resistance will increase with temperature it's not a drastic increase in metals it's just if you heat it up by i don't know 50 degrees it's just one percent or so uh, maybe less depending on the type of metal uh, but it's measurable it's, you, you, you can somehow measure it and we can also try to measure it in the experiment okay and so this this heating um, this can of course happen from the outside yeah? so you have something that heats up your conductor um, if you put cable on a fire or so yeah? then it will heat up or, or current goes through the wire and the current going through the wire and the voltage drop current times voltage creates a power and the power dissipated the power loss in the conductor will heat up the conductor itself so you can you can heat it from the from the outside or you can also have self self heating of this conductor and so what happens at the end is that the resistance if you would measure the resistance of the wire that this is becomes a function of the temperature or it gets temperature dependent or you could also say the conductivity and the resistivity of the wire that they also depend on temperature or become a function of the temperature okay so that's the idea and so now we need to yeah we can we can try to put this into formulas or we can look at the schematics so on the y-axis here we have the resistance and on the x-axis we have the temperature and we could have in general let's say three different cases um, the first and simplest case is the resistance does not depend on temperature at all you change temperature nothing will happen to the resistance um, it, it can be the case so there are some special um, types of metal where you where you mix different metals with each other um, and by proper mixing you can balance the different effects and so i don't know if you have heard of constantan or isotan these are special alloys let's say um, especially made for for measuring currents and if you want to measure current it's difficult to measure current so usually you take a shunt resistor you feed the current through the resistor and measure the voltage drop across the resistor but then of course it's bad if the resistance changes with current and changes with temperature so you want to have something for your for your measurement resistor for the shunt resistor that behaves like this that does not almost does not change the resistance with temperature okay so most metals will behave like this that 
for low temperature there is less resistance and the higher the temperature the resistance will go up this is hopefully what we will also see in our experiment and there are of course some also some materials where if you increase the temperature the resistance will go down okay and now we can say okay we have some reference temperature let's say our room temperature that we call t0 and we have some new temperature uh, I don't know, maybe 40 degrees Celsius if, if our circuit is in operation for a longer time and there's a temperature difference between these two cases. And so now we can try to write this into a formula and say, okay, our resistance as a function of temperature is this reference resistance plus some change in resistance. Just very simple. So reference resistance and some change in resistance and the the resistance change does depend on temperature. And the, this reference resistance R0 or R0 is just the resistance at our reference temperature at 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so uh, this would be some, some, some very general formula. Now, what we could do is we, or we, we, we don't really know how this works here. Right? Uh, we don't know how the resistance changes over temperature, what this delta R is. So let's assume that's a linear change. So let's linearize this equation. Or have you ever heard of a Taylor series, Taylor expansion? Someone? M most not? So um, you, you, will, you will maybe probably have this in some math class. So um, yeah, we can assume that... Um, we, we approximate the change by some, um, by some linear coefficient and then the linear temperature difference. Um, I should have maybe called this delta t here, but this is essentially the delta t. So we, we take the derivative of this function. Yeah, the problem is we don't know this function, but from a mathematical point of view, we would calculate this derivative at this point and then multiply uh, this derivative with the temperature difference. So it's a little bit like a linear function. This would be the slope of the linear function, this would be the x of your linear function, and this would be the, the offset, the absolute term of your linear function. So we linearize this equation. And so then we, we, we give this a new name um, and rearrange this equation a little bit and, and call this coefficient that here is in front of this, this is what we call alpha. And the alpha would be this year divided by our reference resistance. So if you check the unit of this alpha, which is called temperature coefficient, we have resistance and resistance, so they will cancel each other, but we have one over temperature. So the, the unit of this temperature coefficient is one over Kelvin. You change the temperature by so many Kelvin, and then you have this factor here, uh, that is 1 over Kelvin, so they together, they will be unitless, and this is what is added or subtracted from your reference resistance. Um, so we don't care about really about this derivative, we put everything into this alpha. And this works for the linear case. In more general, we could also say, okay, there is not just this linear term, there might be some term with a square that depends on the square of the temperature change, temperature change to the power of three and so on. And the first coefficient we would call alpha and the second we would call beta and the third one we might call gamma and so on and so on. Okay, but usually we just take into account this alpha term. That's the idea. And this is what you will probably already do maybe tomorrow in the exercise when dealing uh, with tasks like this. Okay, and so then we can look at these two different inter interesting cases when we have an alpha that is larger than one. Um, so this alpha was called, or the meaning of this alpha is temperature coefficient. And if this is larger, uh, not larger than one, so excuse me, larger than zero, then the sign is positive. So we have a positive temperature coefficient and positive temperature coefficient is an awfully long term. So everyone abbreviates this as PTC. So PTC means positive temperature coefficient. It's something where the resistance increases with temperature, so it, it's better conducting in a cold state, like metals. 
So most metals will behave like this. Um, also PTC thermistors or for example uh, certain ceramics, for example this barium titanate. And this barium titanate is quite interesting because as I've explained, most metals will just change the temperature by some percent or less than a percent. If, even if you heat them by 100, heat them up by 100 Kelvin or so. But this uh, barium titanate is quite interesting. So it stays constant for a certain temperature range. And then around room temperature, it really drastically increases the resistance. And in, it increases the resistance. So this is a log scale. It really increases the resistance by orders of magnitude. So it's, it's getting 10 times, 100 times larger. And this means, um, yeah, there's a, there's a drastic change in resistance. And it's very easy to measure this drastic change in resistance. You, you don't have to have very exact measurement equipment. So this makes a very cheap thermometer. Um, and most of these thermometers that you have in your kitchen or so to measure room temperature, if it's an electronic one, they rely on these barium titanate um, ceramics inside. So uh, as I said, you can use this for temperature sensors. You can use this also for um, self-regulating heaters. For example, if you, if you have a car and if the car has, and each car has uh, the rear mirrors so that you can take a look at the rear. And if it's cold outside in the winter, like in Germany, uh, sometimes they freeze. So you have ice on them or snow and you cannot see something. So in modern cars, and I, I don't know if they need to be, but usually they are heated. And so there is some heating element behind them. And the heating element usually works also like a PTC element. And so what does it mean? It means um, you switch it on yeah, because you see, okay, my mirror is frozen. I need to heat it up. So you switch on this heater in the car and then the, the heating element is cold. And cold means it's better conducting. There, goes, there will be a large current flowing through this heating element and there's a large current there's a voltage, the, the fixed voltage by your car battery, which is 12 volts. So the heater will heat up and it will heat the mirror and it will melt the snow and the ice. And so then it heats up. If it heats up, the resistance will increase. You have a fixed voltage of the car battery and the resistance increases. What happens to the current? The current will decrease, the current will get smaller. So the, the heating power in the element, in, in the heater is current times voltage. The current stays constant, but the current gets smaller. So you have less power. So it will not heat that much anymore. So after a certain while, it will get colder again. Okay, it will get colder. What happens to the resistance? The resistance will get smaller. What happens to the current? The current will increase. The power will increase. It will heat up more. So it's somehow self-regulating to a certain temperature. You don't need to have some control. The, 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 the heating element controls itself. If you, if you power it with a constant voltage source. And as I said, most batteries are constant voltage sources. Okay. And you can also use this for current limiting devices or fuses for circuit protection. Um, with external heating or with self-heating, yeah, you have something and a circuit, some device, and the circuit and this device heats up by some accident, some malfunction. Um, and if you have some PTC element in series, it heats up, the resistance increases, it will reduce the current, your circuit is safe. S same effect as before. Okay, and so then uh, the other thing, if this temperature coefficient alpha is smaller than zero, then it's negative. So we call it negative temperature coefficient resistance or NTC because once again, this is awfully long. And so they will better conduct in a hot state. 
And now you might ask, okay, well, but what you explained before is everything is made out of atoms and these atoms will start to oscillate if we increase the temperature. So why, why, why do we have materials where there will be better current conduction in a hot state? Do you have an idea? And you can see it's for most semiconductor materials or for example also for graphite. And the thing is that what conducts in semiconductors is not really electrons, but it's most often missing electrons. So you have, uh, there's some electron missing and some, some other atom is positively charged or sometimes also you have an electron too much, but you don't have these many free electrons like in a metal uh, material. And so if you increase the temperature, the, the atoms will oscillate more so there will be more friction with electrons, but also you have much more, you get much more free electrons uh, in, in these semiconductor materials. And that's why most semiconductor materials will be, will conduct better in a hot state. So you can also use this for temperature sensors uh, and most temperature sensors that you have, I've, yeah, external heating uh, in, in large batteries, like in your electric vehicle, car, battery, uh, the thermistors, in 3D printers to check the temperature of the filament, in toasters, in all the household appliances. These are usually NTC uh, thermistors to measure uh, temperature. You can also use it for self-regulating heaters, but here you need to have a current source. So you feed a constant current. Um, in, in a cold state, you have a large resistance. So current stays constant, large resistance means large voltage. Large voltage, voltage times constant current gives a power and the power will heat up the element. And so if you heat it up, um, the resistance will decrease, will get smaller because it's better conducting in a hot state. And if you feed a constant current, the voltage will decrease. So the power will decrease, so it will not heat up that much anymore. So it will get cold again, uh, resistance will increase voltage will increase, power will increase, it will heat up more and so on and so on. So it's also self-regulating. And what these, ooh, and what these um, NTC thermistors are also often used for is inrush current limiters. So um, if you have a large motor somewhere and if you switch on the motor, then there's usually a very large current at the beginning. And so every, so you have a large I don't know, a large drilling machine and you switch on the drilling machine and the motor, at b before the motor reaches its full speed, it will draw a huge current from the power outlet. And so every time you would switch on this motor, the fuse would blow. Or you could have a larger fuse, but then it's not really secure anymore. So what then uh, manufacturers build into the large drilling machine or a large grinding machine or something like this is some inrush current limiter. So they just put an, an NTC resistor in series to the motor. So if you switch on the motor, the, the NTC resistor is still cold and has a rather high resistance. So it limits the current the fuse will not blow, still the motor will start to rotate. Not as fast as it could, but it will start to rotate and accelerate. And the, the, the motor will, will accelerate and so on and so on and so on. And then also the current going through this NTC uh, thermistor uh, will heat up this element and in a hot state it's better conducting. So after two or three or a couple of seconds it's heated so much that it almost does not um, have any influence anymore on the circuit. And this is what you can also see here. So in the, in the plot before, this was temperature and this was resistance. But on the, on the next page, um, it's not temperature and resistance, it's voltage and current. So for small voltages and small current, this is like a high resistor, high slope. But after you pass a certain current, then the voltage drop gets smaller once again. And this is what happens in this inrush current limiters um, that you have in, in almost, as I said, almost any uh, larger machine that has some motor in there. 